Good afternoon ladies and gents. Today I'm going to demonstrate a stacked grouped arrangement. I have a wooden crate here that I'm going to use as my container. To line that I'm going to use some hessian. I'm going to use wet oasis so I'm going to use cellophane uh, to stop any leakage. For my fresh items I have ornamental chilies, hypericum, a rose and this variety is called Miss Piggy. I'm also going to use some wheat and some pheasant feathers and some painted oak leaves. Now I'm kind of thinking about American Thanksgiving so using it with a view to perhaps having it as a Thanksgiving arrangement so hence the dried wheat uh, to celebrate harvest, chilies, the food aspect, so on and so forth. So that's the, that's the kind of theory. Okay, so wet brick of Oasis, which I've already soaked. I'm going to fold that cellophane over and I'm literally going to wrap it like you would do a Christmas present. just so the water doesn't escape through the hessian. It also gives you an opportunity to practice your Christmas present wrapping. <laughs> now I'm just going to cut the excess cellophane. don't have to use cellophane, you can use bin liner, anything that's going to be watertight really. Then just going to remove the raw selvage of the hessian so it neatens it up a tiny bit. And then bring that around my oasis brick and pop that into my crate. So you can see it doesn't look quite so naked inside. Okay, so then I'm going to start at the very top with my pheasant feathers. Now I want my pheasant feathers to all be the same height. So I'm going, to, I'm going to be very selective in what I choose here. Kind of noticing a bit of a theme going on with these pheasant feathers. I used them earlier on today. <laughs> so we want them all to be roughly the same height. And you want them all to be a reasonably nice shape if we can help, if we can get it. Uh, just trying to sort through those and find the nicest, nicest examples. There we go, getting there. They are quite um, irregular shapes and they are all slightly different colours as well quite nice to get a bit of a mix going. There we go, I think we've got enough I've got there. all of those roughly in the same kind of height or length. I'm just going to cut. Seems very cruel I know, but not as cruel as removing them from the pheasants. They were dead incidentally. <laughs> That's too short. Then I'm going to start with those at the very back of my arrangement and try and keep them straight. Difficult for me to do this with my back to the arrangement. So once I've done it, I'll turn it around so you can see where I've, where I've got to. Try and keep them nice 
and even all the way along. I think I might need to cut a few more. Needed more than I thought I was going to. So try and keep them nice and level. All the way along the back of the arrangement. And I've got a couple of gaps there. And a gap there, so I'm just going to have one more feather. These ones look like they've had a fight. <laughs> there we go. So you can see what we've done there. We've got a nice long line of feathers along the back of the arrangement. Got one more missed out there, I'll just pop into the side. Okay, so next I'm going to use my wheat rid of some of this rubbish and again you want it all to be the same length so cutting it all I'm trying to pick out the most choice heads of wheat so then roughly similar size and I'm just going to do a line of those below the pheasant feathers and you can see how that's coming on a few more that's about right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I've bunched them so they stay in the same height. This is where I want the heads to come. So that's where I want them to finish. And then you've got that much to go into the oasis. So I need to cut about there. nearly got those in the bin <laughs> and then it's a line of wheat again keeping them nice and straight all the way along the back of the arrangement the idea is you keep them exactly the same height and the same distance away from each other. Don't know if you can see me all right at that angle, can you? <laughs> cool. Okay. So keeping as even match across the top as you can. might be running out. No, I think I'm nearly there. All the way along. I'm doing this at an angle so I can actually see that they are going down slightly so I'm afraid I'm going to turn it to face me so that I make sure I get them straight. Sorry, can you see all right, Laura? Okay, so all the way along there. Oh, 
rustling going on here. So we have that line of wheat underneath the line of pheasant feathers. Next I'm going to start at the base. Have these rather lovely dyed oak leaves. Cutting all the leaves off. Because they have the advantage of being dried, not dried, being dyed, it actually makes them quite stiff, the stems, so really easy to get into the oasis. I'm just popping those in at the base. Again, they need to all have a similar height. Some of them are a little bit longer. I'm just going to strip some of the leaf. And it's just a case of, of stripping some of the leaf either side of the spine. So if you put your thumb in there and you can pull the rest of the leaf away, that leaves the spine of the leaf that you can still then use to push into the oasis. And you can see it's going into the oasis quite easily. The stems are quite quite sturdy. Nearly there. Going the whole way along the base of the arrangement. And obviously these um, dyed oak leaves are quite evocative of autumn, all the leaves falling. So we've got that harvest kind of Thanksgiving vibe going on. I think I could do with a couple more. There we have our little group of leaves along the bottom. Next I'm going to use the chilies. They're going underneath the wheat. Fresh chilies, um, ornamental chilies, not food standard by any means. So please don't eat them. <laughs> yeah, these are ornamental fresh chilies. And you get them in all sorts of colours. Uh, they come in reds, burgundies, and these orange ones. They look really good for Halloween, I have to say. We have our line of chilies. Okay. And 
Next I have these scrummy Miss Piggy Roses. I'm just going to take the guard petal off that one. What you will notice is as I'm putting them into the oasis I'm actually slitting the stem up. That exposes a greater surface area of cells exposed to the water so therefore they can take water up slightly more readily from the oasis. Just helps to give them a little bit of extra help in taking up water so they hydrate happily. That's the end. Again, taking off the outer guard petal. Now roses have a guard petal. It's a, a slightly rougher, um, more coarse petal that's on the outside of the rose bloom. It's almost a self-preserving mechanism that the rose has to protect the head. So by removing that, it just makes the rose look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. It's not detrimental to the longevity of the rose. It does just make it look a wee bit more attractive. Now if you're doing a wedding, obviously save those petals because they can be used as table confetti or natural confetti to throw at the bride and groom. They will dry as well, so if you're wanting to make dried rose petals, save them for that. And one more rose. In the end. I've got room for my last rose there. And then finally, just got my hypericum. Remove the lower leaves and then they just get tucked in, in between. Just tuck that. <laughs> that little chili doesn't want to play a game. in behind the roses just to create that line all the way through to the end And I've got just enough room to pop another one in this end. And there you have your stacked arrangement. Thank you very much for watching our um, how-to guide this afternoon. If you've enjoyed it and you'd like to see some more, then please go onto our website, uh, www.trianglenursery.co.uk. Uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the blogs and you've got lots of how-to guides there um, and if you've enjoyed what we're doing um, and you'd like to sub subscribe to our YouTube channel there's lots more information and, uh, uh, and more how-to guides on there as well. So thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.